So if it seems that a patient has a high ankle sprain, um, two tests that we can do is the cotton clunk test or the medial ST glide test. So for the cotton clunk, for both tests, we'll have the patient sitting and um, either laying in supine or sitting in long sit. Then we'll stabilize the distal tip fib joint. For the cotton clunk test, we'll then apply a force at the talus and calcaneus, giving a lateral glide at the medial aspect of the calcaneus and talus. A positive test would be considered as extra velocity or a clunking um, sensation that is felt upon the um, lateral glide. Then for the medial ST glide test, we'll switch our hand placement and then we're still stabilizing the distal tip fib joint. Now we're applying a medial glide on the lateral aspect of the calcaneus and talus. Again, a positive sign for the medial ST glide would also be excessive laxity or clunking sensation, indicating that the high ankle sprain and the um, syndiosmosis involvement um, when pushing the talus into the mortise, causing the spreading. The Krieger external rotation test is another um, test we can use to um, help um, differentiate between a high and a low ankle sprain. To do this test, we'll have the patient sit at the edge of the plinth with um, their foot in its natural resting position off the side. Then we will stabilize the distal tip fib joint and then use our other hand to um, make contact with the calcaneus. And then once holding the calcaneus, we'll externally rotate the foot. We're trying to gap the mortise, which will then cause pain in the joint. And then if this um, there is pain with this test, that would be um, a positive pain reproduction. Um, so it would be a positive Krieger external rotation test, signifying that it is a high ankle sprain. The fibular translation um, test is another one that we can do for a high ankle sprain. To do this, we we'll have the patient lying in side lying with a side that we are testing um, superior, and then. We'll find the lateral malleolus, go right above, and then we'll be on the, fib, um, the fibula. Um, so then we will take the heel of our hand and we can push anterior and positively to, um, to translate the bone. Then a positive test would be excessive translation or reproduction of pain. Um, and then if the patient is too big, you can go on to the other side and um, do the same test again with the heel of your hand. We're just looking for um, excessive translation showing that there's more lax, um, the bone is moving more, or the pain reproduction, indicating a high ankle sprain and syndiosmosis involvement. So this is the squeeze test. If we're suspecting a high ankle sprain, then what we can do is we'll come to the distal third of the tib, tibia and fibula, and we'll do that by coming just up from the lateral malleoli. They will um, give a compressive force. If we pr reproduce pain in the syndiosmosis area or reproduce that ankle pain from the sprain, there will be a positive sign for a high ankle sprain showing that there's syndiosmosis um, involved. So if we are suspecting a sprain, injury, um, a high ankle sprain, then we can do the heel thump test. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our patient lie in prone with their foot um, off the edge of the plinth and some plantar flexion. Then we are going to secure the distal tip fib joint. We're gonna take our other fist and we're going to apply a thump into the heel, which then forces the, um, the talus into the mortise. Um, if this reproduces the pain in the distal tip fib joint, then it could help differentiate between it being syndiosmotic or a lateral ankle sprain. But um, the reliability is still in question because it has been also known to pick up distal tib fib, distal tibulus, tibula fractures. Okay. Right. If my patient has a lateral ankle um, injury and we're suspecting damage to the ATFL, then we can do the anterior drawer test. Basically, so I got my patient sitting here and long sitting with her foot over the edge of the plinth and I'll secure the tibia and I'll apply an anterior force this way. And then um, if there's a um, noticeable laxicity difference from the involved to the uninvolved side, then that would imply that there's damage of the ATFL. 
All right, so if we're suspecting a lateral ankle sprain, one way we can test for the, um, to check the integrity of the ATFL or the CFL is with the Taylor tilt test. So basically what we're doing is whatever side we're testing, that side is um, superior, we're lying on the side that we're not testing. And then my patient's foot is off over the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go on the talus just inferior of the lateral alveoli and then superior of the calcaneus and I will imply, apply a downward force to put the, um, the foot into inversion and then if they're uh, when comparing sides um, when comparing the involved to the uninvolved side if there is excess laxicity if there is a clunkiness or other indications that there would be more ligament, less ligamentous stability in the, um, the, in the involved side versus the uninvolved side, then it would imp um, indicate that there is damage to the ATFL and or the CFL. All right, so if it looks like my patient has um, vascular complications in her lower extremities, then I'll do the home ends test. Basically what I have is my patient lying in supine right here with her feet off the edge of the plinth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, I'm going to squeeze the calf looking for pain, discomfort. Um, that would be a sign that there's some vascular compromise. But the little caveat is if she has a strain or tear of her calf muscle, that will also hurt when I squeeze it. So I will apply a distraction by taking her ankle into dorsiflexion right here. And then I will reapply the squeezing of the calves. I will take her into dorsiflexion and squeeze the calves. And again, if we have that pain or discomfort, then um, when I pair that along with other signs of vascular compromise, like discoloration or abnormal pulses, then that would be a sign that um, she can has some vascular compromise in her lower extremity. All right, so basically what we got here is um, the Berger's test. So we'll do the Berger's test is if it looks like there's any vascular complications or insufficiency in our, the lower extremity. So basically what we're going to do is I'm gonna take my patient's leg passively up to about 45 degrees and I'll rest it here. And we're going to hold it for three minutes. And then we're looking for blanching um, and venous collapse. And then after that three minutes ends, what we're going to do is we're going to take the leg. And we're going to um, have it hang on the side of the plinth. And then we're looking to see how long it takes for the color to return back in the patient's lower extremity. And if it takes more than one minute, then it will be positive. And then there would be um, an input implying that there is vascular compromise or insufficiency in her leg. So if my patient comes in and is complaining signs and symptoms that, and it looks like there could be an Achilles tendon rupture um, or tear, so then what, basically what we'll do is we'll do the Motless test. So I've got my patient lying in prone, and I'll ask her to bend her knee and bring her foot towards the ceiling. As she does this, I'm looking to see the action of her foot. So how she's staying in plantar flexion, that would be a negative sign. But if her foot went into relative dorsiflexion, which would either be neutral or dorsiflexion, then it would indicate that there is a tear or a rupture of her Achilles tendon. All right, so now we're gonna do the Thompson's test. Basically, we're looking for a tear of the Achilles tendon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze my patient's um, my patient's calf and then um, this would be a negative test because it plantar flexes but if there's no plantar flexion with the squeeze then it would be um, positive for a complete tear of the Achilles tendon. Okay so if a patient is looks like they could have um, an Achilles tendinopathy then we can do the Royal London Hospital test Basically what we'll do is we'll come to the symptomatic side, the patient lying in prone, and we're gonna palpate along the Achilles tendon, looking for that pain when they do. 
um, when we pinch it. So when they say it's painful, then we'll let go. We'll have them actively dorsiflex their, their foot and then we'll um, squeeze again. If there is less pain when the dorsiflexion is occurring, then it is indicative of a um, Achilles um, tendon. Right, so we're going to do nail science. So basically, if we think the posterior tibial nerve is causing us any problems, then we can test it with this um, test right here. So first, what we'll do is we'll find the medial malleoli. We'll come a little bit posterior to it. And then we'll take our two fingers and give it a nice tap. And then if that gives neurogenic um, symptoms of pain, discomfort, irritation, up and down the nerve, then it would be a positive sign. So we just did the um, tenel sign for the posterior tibial nerve. Now we're gonna do it for the deep fibial nerve. So we come over here in the anterior aspect of the ankle. And then um, we're just gonna do the, the tapping on the nerve to see if we redistribute the neurological pain or pain, numbness, tingling, loss of sensation. And if that is recreated, then it would be a positive sign for the deep fibular nerve. If my pain is um, describing um, pain or numbness tingling around her metatarsal areas in her foot, then it could be indicative of Morton's neuroma. One great way to test this out would be to be um, the Morton's test. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll have my patient's foot out here, then I'll come on the plantar side and apply compression at the metatarsals. I'll give a squeeze. And then when I do this squeeze, I'm looking for pain, discomfort, numbness, tingling, and just um, evoking that neurological response. All right. So this is the feast line. We drew a line from the medial malleoli to the first MTP. We connect the dots, and then we're looking for the navicular. And then, and then um, we're basically seeing if it's on the line or below. So because um, her navicular is in line, this would be a neutral foot. But if, if it was substantially lower, like around here, then it would be a flat foot. So this is the functional hallux limitus test. So basically we're um, doing this to check and see if they're limited in extension of the, um, the big toe. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at the first ray in MTP mobility. We have our patient lying in supine with the foot off the bed, off the edge. Then we put them in subtalar neutral. We keep them in subtalar neutral. We passively extend the first MTP. Then if it is lacking extension, the first ray will plantar flex as compensation, and that would be a positive right. test. So this is the windless test. Basically, we do this if, um, to see if a patient has um, plantar fasciitis. So basically what we're going to do is we'll have our patient stand um, on a raised surface so her toes can be slightly over the edge. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure the MTP joint, and I'm going to extend her big toes. We're looking for pain reproduction and symptoms of plantar fasciitis around her calcaneus or medial arch. And if so, that would be a positive test. Okay.